Hello my friends, welcome back to another video. Today I am taking you on a journey in snowy Colorado to Whole Foods Market to do my grocery pickup. I have a haul for you and then I'm going to show you some easy meals, some meals that are meat eater friendly, some meals that are vegan friendly and how they can coexist. All right, so we just got back from Whole Foods and I'm going to show you what we have for the week obviously i'm cooking vegan and non-vegan like the title in the video and i just wanted to show you that this is easy it is in no way shape or form more expensive you're not going to be creating these enormous amounts of food and then no one will you know have any chance to eat it and i just want to show you that this is absolutely possible i don't normally put the prices of things down in the description box because honestly that takes a lot of time to do and if you don't trust me with my prices then i don't know what to tell you um obviously these prices are going to vary from state to state but i'm just going to show you some really quick meal ideas here and show you what i got at the grocery store so you can see how to shop like i do if you want to cook yourself something meatless or dairy free and then the rest of your family is something with meat and dairy. So the standard American diet versus a vegan diet. They can coexist. I promise you that. You're not going to be spending extra money and you are not going to be spending a lot of time in the kitchen. These are quick and easy. So I hope this is helpful for some of you that have been requesting this video. Let me flip you around here and show you what we got. This is not really organized into sections, but let me just show you here. We have some flaky biscuits, the Immaculate Organic Bakery I really like. We have the Just Mayo vegan kind. We have my cream cheese and then we have regular cream cheese. We have green enchilada sauce and shaved Brussels sprouts, organic frozen brown rice, and the flour and corn tortillas these are amazing for enchiladas i this is out of budget this is the new kite hill soft spreadable cheese i just wanted to try it so take that out of um the receipt if you need to but this is like 8.99 so yeah super expensive but i wanted to try it <laughs> um some barbecue sauce we have navy beans also take this out um this is just a mask that i was gonna try i love face masks on certain days of the week i have some red enchilada sauce some sweet red chili i have cannellini beans we have lemon juice and jackfruit and then before I go over, we have some sourdough bread, some seafood flake sale. This is just like crab meat. I'm gonna use that for sushi bowls. We have some white rice. We have corn on the cob. We have some coastal blend, you know, that's my favorite. I have some medium ripe green olives and these are pitted. These are super good for just about anything. I have some garbanzo beans for hummus. I have pineapple chunks for smoothies some cheese for my son, cucumbers, the Gardein Golden Nuggets. I will share this price. This is on sale for $2.15. That's pretty rare. Gardein usually runs $3.99, $4 for these. These are just vegan chicken tenders. I have some veggie broth. I have two of those. And then I have some plant-based burgers. I didn't order this. I actually ordered the plant-based sausages and paid for the plant-based sausages but this was substituted, um, which is fine. I really wanted to make some sausage gravy to go with those biscuits, but it looks like we're making some burger gravy, which is totally okay. I have some baked tofu. I'm gonna show you what I do with this. It's pretty interesting and really delicious. I have some Colby Jack cheese and the whole wheat thin and crispy pizza crust. These were, um, I believe they were substituted because I got the sprouted grain, but no worries there. And then you can leave this out, but I did get these for my husband for breakfast. He really likes croissants and things like that. I'm going to put this away, and then next up you'll see some really easy meal ideas just to involve everybody in the house. The first meal is going to be cheesy chicken goulash. So what you're going to need is some whole grain spaghetti. You'll need some marinara sauce of your choice. We really love the rouse. Frozen broccoli, onions, and bell pepper. And then for the chicken, you're just gonna need some frozen chicken and this ragu cheese sauce. And the frozen chicken is super easy because you can just pop it in the oven at 400 for around 25 minutes and you are good to go. And this is the end result. Pasta is a very versatile dish. You can add things to it 
during the end or when it's cooking honestly it is such a staple during the week because i can plop some meat on there for everybody else and then some extra veggies and hemp seeds for myself everybody is satisfied and it did not take any extra time to prepare this meal for the meat eaters versus the vegans All right, my friends, tonight we are having some green chili chicken and non-chicken enchiladas. I used to work at Rock Bottom, which is like a brewery chain out here in Colorado. You probably have one in your state. I'm not really sure though. Anyways, um, they had these green chili like seafood enchiladas that were super delicious. Um, and we are going to make them this way now. So I'm going to show you in this video how to use leftovers too. This is the chicken from our spaghetti and pasta night. So there's just some cheese sauce in here. And then I am going to put that in the tortilla with the refried beans and the enchiladas. I'm going to put cheese in my husband's. And then for me, I am going to do the jackfruit beans and the cream cheese and we're gonna put them in these flour and corn tortillas and we are gonna sprinkle a little bit of this on top I'm gonna to serve it with Spanish rice which is literally my my Spanish rice is salsa and brown rice mixed together so that is as fancy as we are getting in the patent household so let me show you how I roll these together you just put these into the tortillas make sure your tortillas are warm because these are corn tortillas they might crack on you so just heat them up in the microwave for a little bit if you get a chance bake them at 400 for 20 minutes covered and then another five minutes uncovered and you have some beautiful green chili chicken enchiladas Okay, so this actually just dawned on me that a lot of people might not know what jackfruit is, but it's this stuff and um, it really is like tofu to me. It takes on the flavor of anything that you give it. So it comes in the can like in these little chunks and then you break them apart. The only thing that I do differently that I don't know if a lot of people do is take this little bean seed thing out. Um, just because it's a little on the harder side sometimes usually in the can you should be fine but it's a strange consistency for me and my family so i'm going to take it out of there and then shred the rest here's another tip that i like to do when i don't want to use two pans i just put some foil in between the meat and the non-meat and I really enjoy doing it this way because the cheese doesn't melt onto mine and the meat juices don't seep onto mine and it's really helpful because you don't have to dirty two pans. And this is the end result. We used the Kite Hill sour cream to plop on top of there. We had some leftover mac and cheese, so I ended up just serving that to my husband. And then I just mixed the extra refried beans with corn and the jackfruit, and I like to dip chips in them. So this was very filling, and we froze the rest of it. Enchiladas are a staple in our household, and I really hope you give this recipe a try. This next meal was too easy, so I just didn't even include the ingredients in the beginning, but it is some chicken and waffles. Growing up in Pennsylvania, this was a big deal, like chicken and waffles with like shredded chicken and gravy was a big thing. So I have frozen waffles under there. I have some of those frozen chicken tenders. I have mashed potatoes that we had left over. I froze them and then thawed them out. And then I have some vegan gravy. So that is just cornstarch and water, a little bit of veggie broth, some soy sauce, dill, black pepper, garlic, onion, and then a little bit of water to thin it out. I served it with some green onion here and you can find this recipe typed out in the description box below. Today we are going to make a sushi bowl and I heard some of you last time you do not like sushi nori. That's totally fine. You don't have to add that. I am even not going to add it this time, but this is super delicious if you want to crinkle that on top. Some of you are hesitant to roll sushi. That's okay too. That is why we are going to make it into a bowl this time. So over here, you're going to need some sushi nori, but that's optional. 
you are going to need rice as your base. Of course, you can use whatever kind of rice. I'm gonna use white rice, but I do enjoy brown rice. You're gonna need some sesame seeds for a garnish. Sesame seeds have a lot of great nutrients to them. I'm not gonna list them for you, but I have black sesame seeds. And then over here, I have some of my favorite cucumbers. I have green onion. And then we are gonna make a kind of like a California roll bowl. So what we have over here is this baked tofu. I like the teriyaki and this is like extremely firm. So what you do with this is shred it and it mimics the crab sensation that you might be missing. You did see in the grocery haul we got crab. So for my husband's, I'm gonna put crab in his but we're gonna mix some of this together, a little bit of sriracha, sriracha, I don't know how to say that, um, and some just mayo, salt, pepper, and garlic, as well as the green onions, and that is going to be our California roll. So again, base is going to be this, and then we're gonna have some chilled cucumber and some California roll. I really enjoy like the warmth of the rice with the coolness of everything else. And then I'm gonna put some soy sauce on top of it as well, and we are gonna call it good. Let me show you how I put everything together. Okay, so we have this shredded. Again, if you're using crab, you don't need to use that cheese grater, just chop it up into little bits. Now I'm gonna add my green onion, a little bit of garlic powder. There goes the rice. A little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of onion powder, salt, pepper, sriracha, and mayo. I just looked that up and everybody pronounces it differently, so I don't feel as silly pronouncing it wrong. And this is to whatever flavor you like. I find this incredibly spicy, but I like the flavor that it gives, so I'm gonna add some of that in there. A little bit of salt, some pepper, onion, garlic. You know, I've tried it before, but they also make this, um, let me flip you around. It is hair dry day. Um, that is why my hair is wet, but they also make this kelp powder. And I found that out when I first went vegan. It's not even, it's not that expensive. I just don't like to add it to a lot of what I'm making, but it gives you that fish ish. Here, I'll bring you over here. That fishy flavor taste that you might be missing. I don't personally miss it. So I don't add it, but if you are, and you're just transitioning, you can um, add the kelp powder if you want. You can find it on Amazon, anywhere really, honestly, but it's super cheap and it adds a nice flavor. Yum, this bowl was so delicious. I just put the white rice on the bottom with some soy sauce, some of those cucumbers with salt and pepper, and then I put the vegan crab salad on top with some black sesame and more of that sauce. And yeah, I had two bowls of this. My husband really enjoys this as well. And it's just a fun, different take on sushi. So I really hope you enjoyed this one. Hey everyone. So I am laying here with a messy, <laughs> messy living room. And I realized I didn't film an outro for this video. So I am just absolutely exhausted this week and it is only Wednesday. Just wanted to pop on to let you know that most of my videos take like 16 hours to upload because we live in the middle of nowhere as most of you know. So I have been trying to pop out as much content as I possibly can. But I really hope this video served a purpose because I do get a lot of questions on how to cook for just a vegan diet when your family eats the standard American diet and I really hope this showed you that it is not hard and I hope that or well I hope that you like this kind of sequence of things where I show you the ingredients and then I show you the end product instead of showing you how to cook everything if you do want to see how to cook everything just drop that in the comment box down below this was just a you know a tryout kind of video to see if it was okay for me to do it like that just to show you like what the ingredients 
are that you need and then what the end result will be. Um, a lot of what I make is super um, beginner cooking friendly because I am still in my eyes a beginner cook so um, you'll see a lot of pastas and a lot of things to make your life a little easier. So I hope that helped. And yeah, I'm going to end it here. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you have not. As always, stay adventurous, stay creative. I'll see you next time.